Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 29. In this tutorial, we will learn how to work with FEM mesh and field data in ADS to get very useful information. So remember in the last tutorial video, we perform an FEM simulation on this filter and we save the field data. In order to look at the field data and the mesh uh, details, we can click on visualization icon here and it will open up a vis field visualization window. Once the window comes up, you can uh, notice the, the isometric view of your structure and you can notice it is of finite size. And this is exactly the size which FEM simulator used for simulation. And this size was controlled using uh, lateral and vertical extension settings, which we did. So in this case here, we have three mm on either side of a structure and we have a five mm height uh, and this the material air as per our settings done in the FEM EM setup. Now, the first thing which you could do here very quickly is to look at the mesh inside a dielectric. So we can select Rogers and we can enable the mesh in Rogers. And from here, we can control the transparency of the mesh. We can control the, the color of the mesh which we want to have. So for example, here, you can look at the tetrahedrals which got created inside the Rogers dielectric. And you can notice the, the tetrahedrals are concentrated towards the corners of, of this structure. That's where we have a finer tetrahedrals. And as we go uh, away from the structure size, you see the bigger tetrahedral because the amount of field there would be very minimal compared to in the close uh, proximity of the, of the conductor. So that gives you a pretty good insight on how your structure got meshed. Similarly, we can switch on the mesh in the air area. And again, here you can see the tetrahedral size is, is smaller when you are closer to the strip. And as you go away from the structure, the tetrahedral grow in size um, because the amount of field is very less in there. And this is one of the reasons why I recommended to use a passband frequency uh, when you select your meshing to be used as your meshing frequency because that's where you have the maximum E field across the structure. And using that E field, FEM creates the mesh. So when you capture that correctly, you capture the meshing properly, uh, representing the true nature of your uh, circuit. Okay, so after we observe the mesh, another interesting thing we can, we can look at um, is the field data. In field data, you have few sensors which are already set up here for you from ADS. So you have these sensors and you can have add your own um, definition of sensors. So here I have added a couple of them already. I will explain how can you do that. But let's look at the default ones here. So these x z equal to zero, y equal to zero, and x extends, these are the, the regular sensors, which will by default be created by ADS. If you enable that sensor, you can look at the field and you can go to solution setup, pretty much like momentum. You can pick the frequency on which you would like to see, and you could enable the shaded plot and switch on the animation to see the field um, across, across the sensor location. But here, this is all what we already did in momentum. Now, another thing which you could do here, if you want to see the mesh only for that slice in the sensor setup, you can click on show and it shows you the mesh only for that slice, not for the entire volume of your structure. Now here I have also enabled a specific sensor to be used at, at this location here. And you can see I am taking this slice out. And after I add sensor, it's also possible to select it and click edit. And using edit here, you can see this is the overall extent of my X, X dimension here. And I can, I can insert the sensor wherever I want internally. So let me disable the other sensor first so that you can get more clarity. So here I can slowly slice this and I can position it anywhere across my structure. I say done. And now the sensor is taking out that slice of information on that X, Y, and Z location. And using that, let's you know, let's not see the mesh, but I have enabled it. And now if I want to see the field, I could go ahead and switch on the, the shaded plot. I can look at the shading plot. I could also go to contours and I could enable contours. So let me disable that. And when we switch on the animation, we can see the field coming out and we can have different, 
you know view angles to to look over a structure from so we'll find one right view angle and this seems to be the right one and you can see the field contours around that area and we can increase the field contour division so that i can see results with much more resolution so here you could have multiple things at the same time you can enable the the shaded plot you could enable the arrow plots to look at the field vectors around that area and in order to see that arrow plot clearly you can see here i disable the shaded plot so these are some good things which you could do on your own so the question is how do i create my own near field sensor so let me show you that quickly let me disable everything so now if you have to add your own sensor in any xyz location you have three options here simplest one which i recommend is to use an object plane and by selecting this arrow key you could pick any object uh, plane for example i pick this face here and once you select the face correctly you will have the save option selected and your sensor will be added and you can name the sensor anything you want and once you enable that you can see uh, the sensor location there and this is pretty similar to what i did in the earlier sensor if you want you could also set up a sensor uh, like in z direction so here i have uh, set it into into x and y uh, domain and now this sensor location i could edit and i could change it i can put it as far as i want for my structure as you can see this is the overall uh, sensor and let me switch on the shading plot so that you realize where it is so here is the sensor and you can move it up and down depending upon how close or how far you want to keep it to your surface and you could keep it like 0.5 mm from your structure you could keep it uh, no, 1 mm from a structure and read the field data or see the field data at exactly at that location and how things are moving there so this a uh, lot of time gives you a lot of useful information about how the circuit is behaving um, you know at a certain location how the fields are distributed and at that particular location so you can go ahead and define your own near field sensors the way you want so that's all for this video hope you like the content and it will be useful for your work thanks for watching